the CIA plan to assassinate Julian Assange. I wrote that story with with uh, you know two other reporters. You wrote that story. Yeah, that that was a story that I I, I worked on with um, uh, Zach Zach Dorfman, who brought the who was the the initiator of the story, if you like. It was his story that he brought to Yahoo News. I helped him on it. Um, for months and months drafting and redrafting the story and reporting it. Um, and then Mike Isikoff uh, came in uh, towards the end of that process, did some more really great reporting on it. And um, yeah, so yeah, that was... Uh, that that was that if you call that up you'll find my byline on pull it pull up yeah. that yeah pull up that that article so i brought that up to my friend who's a former cia guy and i was argu- we were arguing about uh, assange and he was like well you're, here's your first problem you're taking new you're taking uh, information from yahoo news not a very credible publication <laughs> I, that, not a single word of not a single sentence of that story has ever been officially disputed can you, for people that might not, might not be aware of that article, can you give like the basic rundown and, and how that story came about and what happened with it? Basically, the 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 story was that um, uh, while Julian Assange was holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy uh, in uh, in London in in the United there Kingdom, um, uh, the C- CIA was interested in, you know, started to explore, but partly because of some uh, sort of top-down, um, uh, you know, you know, hey, what can we do about Assange uh, uh, demands. Um, <laughs> they started spitballing ideas, and uh, they, they, they got some ways into uh, studying... The plausibility and possibility of of uh, assassinating Assange. There it is, right inside the CIA secret war plans against WikiLeaks, right? Yeah, there's yeah. a bit little problem yep. here. It Zach Dorfman and Sean Naylor. It's not a clickable link. It just goes to nothing. Well, that's because our computer's fucked up. No, it's it, there's something wrong with the link. That's the hyper, it does this. That's I I strange. Click the next yeah. link. See if the next link works. Well, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you why. Why um, uh, the CIA has got our computer tapped? Uh, yeah, not surprised. I, 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 yeah, I've I've no idea what what's going on there. Um, and so, how did this get out that they had the? That they uh, were... Zach 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 is a reporter with um, a terrific network of sources. He's a very very good intelligence reporter. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think one of the best in the, in the country. Mm. And um, yeah, we hope he's 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 actually going to be uh, doing some work with us on one of those sort of longer lead time stories that I was talking about. That if if it turns out to be, you know, uh, true, might might uh, might make a good movie. Um, and so this the yeah, premise is the c- so. But the, 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 he basically his sources told him about this, and he, you know, I mean it. You know, he caught a wind of it, and he started pulling on that thread, and and just collecting thread on it for a while, and then he, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he had written for us for Yahoo News before. He wasn't a full time employee of Yahoo News as I was at the time, um, but he had a good relationship with our uh, Washington bureau chief Sharon Weinberger. She, she's now uh, the Wall Street Journal's. Uh, the, the, the sort of national security editor in the Washington Bureau, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, and, uh, you know, so he started reporting it for Yahoo News. And I, I was, uh, as a matter of fact, now I'm thinking back to this. You know, I, I mentioned before we started recording that I'm always worried I'm going to say something in the heat <laughs> of the moment that turns out not to be true. Um, I I was no longer fully employed by Yahoo News when I worked on that story with Zach. Okay. Um, but I was I did it as a sort of a freelance project with him for Yahoo News. Um, so I spent, you know, we spent month after month after month. He and I on signal phone calls together just um just you know going through every line me saying okay you know should we move this section should we move this paragraph 
eight paragraphs up to hear, okay, how about this line? Or, you know, I think we don't need this word in the second sentence of this paragraph. I mean, just and all the time calling new sources, calling other sources back to, you know, double check things. Um, so, yeah, it was an enormous amount of of work that went into it. I mean, and, and um, Mike Pompeo, who was the... Uh, mm -hmm the director of CIA at the time that, that the events we described were taking place um, was later asked about it. And he sort of joked about it, like he said, well, as a matter of fact, some of that story is even true, right? But he didn't say any of it actually wasn't, right? At no point did... He said, he said most of it was true? Some, uh, he said something like some of it's true because he was asked about it. And he said it in a joking way that might lead the person watching to think he doesn't think the rest of it is true but what he actually did was confirm that some of it's true and he's never denied any of any of it wow you know um so that yeah but, uh, the sources involved in that were, were they like active people or were they all retired I, I mean i'll let i'll let the sourcing in the story speak for itself you know generally um when when you have a what what would be called in journalism a background source, so that's a source who's not on the record, right. um, you know, uh, it, it's not you know uh, you're not saying Danny Jones said this. It would be you know you know according to a highly popular uh, podcaster from based in Florida, you know, or something like that. You know, some some phrase that lets the reader get a sense of the type of person who's giving you the quote, but without identifying the person. Um, and, you know, for, for me, it's always like, a you know, according to a, you know, a retired special forces colonel or right. uh, something like that. And so... But once you've agreed that attribution with with the source, you can't then publicly be giving other details about him or her. Got it. So, you know, I mean, I'll let... But the, when it comes to fact-checking, like when the editors go to fact-check a story, do the editors have to get access to your sources to confirm stuff? Sometimes, but they're not likely to... Um, when the editors know the reporters well, they're... They might say, who said this? Mm -hmm. They're probably not going to... If you can't trust your reporter to give you an honest... You know, to honestly report what their own sources are telling you, you sh probably shouldn't be paying them, you know? Right. I mean, no no editor has the time to go through every story that that he or she is responsible for editing and and go through every quote and call every source. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's basically re-reporting the story. Right. Um, yeah. And with, unfortunately, the dynamics of the news business mean that there are fewer editors, and especially copy editors, um, even at major uh, establishments like the New York Times now than they used to be. Uh, so there's less and less sort of work time you know, available man hours, if you like, to to do that sort of thing. So no, mm. no, they they don't. They'll they'll want to know maybe who said it, um, or what kind of a person said it. Sometimes they may not want to know the source because they don't want to have, you know, uh, you know, in case there's any significant legal blowback, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know they've plausible deniability as to the identity of the source. So. Did you or Zach get any kind of blowback on that story? No. I mean, there was... A, Did you guys have to get confirmation from any... Like, similar to uh, Jack's other story, how he had to get the deputy director to to uh, sign off on it. Did that nothing like no, that? No. No. I mean, it was, like I said, uh, uh, Zach, me, and, and, and Mike Isakoff, a uh, very well-known reporter in Washington, I think our, um, you know, reputations were strong enough. And, and you know, Isikoff uh, was at the time uh, probably the senior journalist at Yahoo News or one of the most senior. I, I mean, I don't know how you would tabulate right. that, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and very experienced. So if the three of us are bringing a, a story like that to, to the table, um, 
I don't think uh, the editor, I mean, the editor certainly ask hard questions, but they're not uh, not of the same type that that um, Jack Jack faced in in the story you're referring to. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's such a heavy story. The, the idea that the CIA would have thought about or planned to murder a journalist. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I mean, you know, and there's the other half of it, right? Which is, and then they decided not to, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's right. a, it's a, it's not like it happened, and 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 we're discussing, you know, right. so. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to uh, also say that you know cooler heads prevailed at 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 some point in mm. in in that process. Yes. 